Hello and welcome to the very first Q&A with yours truly, Coach Martin. I had this in mind, actually you had this in mind a long time ago. She was like, Martin, you should do a Q&A, you've never done that. And I was hesitant because in my opinion, nobody cares what my favorite exercise is and what I eat all day long and, you know, what my favorite cheat meal is. But here we are, Gabriela wrote out some questions and I'm going to answer them for you. Um, what questions do you have for me? Let's see. Let's get started. I think I need to start with this question because it makes a lot of sense, at least in my mind, is that uh, why did you start working out and when? So that's a funny story. Um, when I was 16, I would play soccer and I had very bad grades at school in my apprenticeship. So my supervisor at the time, he asked me to quit soccer in the hope that I get better grades. Mm -hmm. um, I did that, I quit soccer, but instead I signed up for a gym membership and the gym took away much more time than soccer. This is super funny. So instead of going to two soccer trainings per week, I now started going four or five times a week to the gym. For some reason, I even improved my grades. That's, I still don't know what the reason for that is. Um, but that's how it started. I was 16 and, and obviously my goal was just to like improve my physique, get more muscular, um, get a good body. Mm -hmm. So, what's the biggest piece of advice you could give to someone who wants to start working out? Um, certainly have a realistic goal. So have a goal. This is most important that you just don't go to the gym to get fit because get mm -hmm. fit could mean so many things. It could be running a marathon, could be getting stronger, could be working on your mobility, flexibility, mm -hmm. whatever. And then also set up routine that is sustainable that you can do over the long run. Not mm -hmm. just like for one week, two weeks, three weeks, even six months. You need to do it your life long, really, because mm -hmm. like fitness should be something that you um, do forever mm -hmm. until 70, 80, until you die, really. Um, so you need to make sure that you follow a fitness regimen that you can do long term. I already know the answer for this one, <laughs> but what's your favorite cheat meal? Mm -hmm. Only one answer to this question. Um, I discovered that in Brazil. Um, so, in essence, it's sweet pizza. And I need to explain because people don't <laughs> know what it is. It's pizza dough. Then, um, instead of tomato and cheese, it's doce de leche. So, what is doce de leche? You know? It's basically like condensed milk that you put in like under very high pressure and then it turns into dosage <laughs> Okay, so um, sugary consistency. Yeah, milky um, sugary consistency. Milky sugary consistency. And then this is topped with brownies. And it sounds for a lot of people <laughs> disgusting whenever I bring this up, but it's so freaking delicious. And mm -hmm. um, once I had this, I was so surprised how good it is. And mm -hmm. we had this like every single week for like yeah. two years or so. Years. So every Saturday, and the pizzeria where this was made, they already knew we we're going to order or we passed by and they all laughed because um, they, they were wondering how the hell do you guys eat like two of those huge pizzas that contain so many calories, but you're still looking good. So they had no idea how to do it, but um, it was so good. And, and it yeah. had chocolate on the border. It had to chocolate on the border, off. yeah. So the border was quite thick and yeah. then in it was just like liquid, chocolate mm -hmm. it's so good so freaking good and i would say this is what i miss the most <laughs> like even in switzerland the first few months were tough because we we didn't have the sweet chocolate the sweet pizza anymore mm -hmm. desserts in switzerland are quite different they're, they're very, a bit like, boring yeah they're it's just boring. like fruits with like a heavy cream Lighter. just like super light yeah yeah i'm not, I'm, I'm not that huge into desserts in it wasn't that yeah. huge in but it also took me a long time to actually make you like to make a try sweet pizza yeah but sweet pizza highly recommended yeah. um, <laughs> if you go to brazil please 
try a sweet pizza. <laughs> this being said, there's also very bad ones. So if you order a yeah. sweet pizza, it's just like with, uh, what's just it called, like, M&Ms or yeah. just some chocolate, terrible, don't ever mm -hmm. try it. But yeah, the one with brownies and also lychee. Amazing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Uh, could you tell us a little bit like more about a lesson that you had to learn the, the hard way? Like in the gym or? In life, it could be gym related or life related, I don't know. Yeah, um, that's clearly the, the importance of rest and I've been going to the gym for such a long time but I still sometimes flirt with overtraining, I still struggle mm -hmm. to take a day off and I can see the same with work. I sometimes like, I'm so goal focused and, and uh, yeah, goal orientated that I forgot to take rest. Now here it's a bit easier because when the sun is out, then it's easier for me to go out and enjoy sunshine and throw, enjoy some relaxation. Mm -hmm. Whereas in Switzerland, when it's cold and, and rainy, um, it wouldn't appeal to me to just go out and, and yeah, lay under the sun or something, because there is no sun. <laughs> so I would work probably way too much. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, tell us a little bit more about your workout split at the moment, please. <laughs> yeah, usually I do like push-pull legs. So one day is chest, shoulders, triceps. Then the second day is back, biceps. Third day is legs. Then I should have a rest day. <laughs> Should have rest day and then I do an upper body and then the next day lower body and then a rest day. Now I don't do the same all year round. I switch it up. Um, I did also five times a week full body for a while to try something new um, because like you know I, I practice what I preach and I always say that the best workout program is the one that you don't do right now. So if you do all the time low rep ranges, you should mm -hmm. also go high rep ranges. And if yeah. you do the same stuff over and over again, your body gets used to it mm -hmm. and you will not be able to grow anymore. So um, I like to switch things up. And I mean, you've been training with me for a while and so like I, I get bored also pretty quickly. Yeah. So I just You're make always things changing. up. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, is there an exercise that you love a lot that is always in your program or you don't mm -hmm. have like anything like that this might surprise you but i'm a fan of the split squats right now what? it's like it's like a no. hate love relationship because it's like very demanding exercise but after that i feel very good and i feel the burn in, in my glutes in my in my quads uh very effective exercise although very difficult uh -huh, it's yeah. also um balance balance so it's not an easy exercise and not really suited for beginners, or at least not with weights, but I really enjoy this one. Um, beside that, a tricep push down. I really enjoy this one. Okay. Uh. Yeah, I was not expecting this answer, <laughs> not at all. I was expecting like chest press, chest and biceps. Yeah, chest <laughs> press or just like shoulder press, something like that. But no, it's not not super, super effective. Do them. I hate, do them I hate them. It's my least favorite <laughs> yeah. because it's so, it's very it's demanding. demanding. It's it takes super effective. Yeah. a lot of balance, a lot of yeah. really mind to muscle connection. Otherwise, good exercise. Yeah. Good exercise. <laughs> it is good, but very hard. <laughs> okay, so why exercising is so important for you? So, um, that's a deep question because I could go very deep into the answer here, but I think, I mean, I started because of how, because I wanted to change my physique and um, it's still important. I cannot say I don't care mm -hmm. how I look. Um, I think everyone who goes to the gym, even though it's like, I mean, like to some degree, everyone wants to change. Yeah. Um, everyone is not, 100% happy with their body. So they go to the gym and, and yeah, try to change what they see in the mirror, right? Mm -hmm. but there's so many other things. Um, there is, for me, some kind of control in my life because like my life, if I look back the past few, let's say five years, so many things have changed when I went to Brazil, when I became a father, when I built my own business, so many changes. Um, and working out has been the only constant in my life. So there's so many things that I cannot control, but 
going to the gym is something I can do every every day, no matter how I feel, no matter where I am, and it, it helps me to keep sane, really. Like, mm -hmm. and then of course, I'm an online fitness coach, and at this at this point, it has just become my identity to to be in shape, obviously. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, there's it, it basically also became to some degree to to my profession to my job although i could also argue there's many good coaches who are not necessarily in really good shape but mm -hmm. i for me um again i practice what i preach and um i cannot ask any of my clients to do something that i don't do myself mm -hmm. um so i want to be a good role model um speaking of being a role model i want to be a good role model for you for lara for the people around me uh, and and um yeah also to my clients obviously show that it's really possible to be in great shape as a dad as an entrepreneur as a generally busy person um, with lots of things going on and this is what motivates me because like there's many people who think or even say it's so hard it's impossible it's like a real challenge and this mm -hmm. kind of motivates me to to show to prove the world that it's possible, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember that in the beginning of my fitness journey, you said something like, oh, when I started, I thought I needed all of like the supplements and everything. Hell like, yeah. I remember you said you bought so many things, you tried so many stuff, right? And, and you explained to me that we don't need like half of that or basically we don't need any of that. But at the moment, do you take any supplements? Like, can you give us a bit of like an explanation of the supplements so, you take? So I think when I was like 16, I would literally buy everything that I could get. So um, even I would not only order from, from Switzerland where I lived, but also from the United States because I thought like these fat burners are better there and, and like the uh, BCAAs and, and the different kind of creatine that were um, out on the market mm -hmm. were superior to some point and bought it all and I mean at the age 16 I didn't have a lot of money right but I would buy literally everything I would spend thousands not hundreds I would spend thousands of francs or dollars on supplements until I realized they don't do anything at all like mm -hmm. BCAAs and all that um, that yeah makes 0.01% and mm -hmm. on our level or the level of, of my clients, you and me, someone who doesn't want to compete, mm -hmm. doesn't have the goal to become a professional bodybuilder um, or, or, you know, play sports at the highest level, it just doesn't make a difference. So I stick yeah. to the basics. Um, uh, right now, what do we have? We have protein. You bought some vitamins, yeah. um, a pre-workout, the pre-workout I like to have is something it's absolutely not mandatory, but it gives me good energy, especially after a bad night when, when I sleep badly. Mm -hmm. um, and in the meantime, it, ha it has become a ritual, yeah. not not the healthiest ritual, because like um, if you have like caffeine every single day, it's probably not best either. Mm -hmm. um, at some point, I bought pre-workouts without caffeine, without stimulants, just because I was so used to drinking something before yeah. the gym. Um, so yeah, I think pre-workout is, is, is something I use consistently. Uh, it has creatine in there mm -hmm. too. Um, and, and then, yeah, what, what I recommend otherwise is usually uh, omega-3, um, especially for those who don't eat a lot of fish, mm -hmm. uh, multivitamin, vitamin D. Um, I don't need it right now because uh, we have plenty of sunshine. Which is great, which is fantastic. But in Switzerland, in Switzerland, <laughs> yeah, there they would take it. Um, whey protein. We have right now the pre-mixed drinks yeah. that I just had one before after the workout. Uh, really good. And yeah, right now I'm experimenting with supplements, not necessarily for to get better gains, but more to get more quality sleep. This is where my brand comes in. As you know, I'm trying to, or I'm building a, a brand. It's a goal for me this year. And I want to create a supplement for entrepreneurs, for hardworking people who tend to 
be overworking like me who, who tend to push it all the time and um, I, I want to find a supplement that, that make it just easier let's say when you have troubles falling asleep because your mind is racing all the time there is products you can take to calm you down to, to sleep fall asleep easier mm -hmm. than fall or, or sleep through the night um, this is something I'm experimenting right now and then uh, something almost like a pre-workout but for work, so pre-work, when I would do podcasts or when I need a lot of attention over a long period of time. Um, yeah, more about that very soon. I'm very excited about this new project. Um, but again, this is not really something I would recommend for the regular gym goer that just wants to increase muscle mass or, mm -hmm. or lose body fat, but more to someone who is, yeah, a little bit of a workaholic who, who just wants to get the full potential. Mm -hmm. So how to improve sleep, how to improve my productivity, what can I do to be a bit sharper, right? Mm -hmm. um, all those things that I look into right now. And um, yeah, Catalyst, my brand, will hopefully launch soon. Mm -hmm. So since we are talking about business, I'm going to ask some you know, business-related questions. <laughs> uh, let's start with... Why did you start gym performance and when? Um, so. 2014, so that's also, I'm giving you a, a short answer here. I went to the United States in 2014 to California, Santa Monica. I would get hugely inspired. I already had this big passion of fitness. I would go there because I knew there's a lot of uh, fitness people around. Um, I mean, I would work out next to The Rock and 50 Cent and Arnie was there at Gold's Gym and I was so fascinated. And then I would go to the beach and I would meet all these calisthenics guys and like people from Cirque du Soleil and uh, a, a light bulb uh, went, went on because I realized there is people who make a living of fitness. And back then I was working in IT, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And this was the first time I saw people using Instagram and they could like monetize it and they could coach other people. And for me, this was an eye-opening experience. So I decided to, well, just create an Instagram, uh, create a blog and started posting my routines and, and whatnot. And then eventually when I would go back to Switzerland, um, I had first inquiries from, from people saying, man, that's very cool what you're doing. How can I get in this great shape? How can I do? Uh, how can I work out using my own body weight because I was hugely into that too and this is how it started I had my first client back then it was all online by the way back then 2014 um, and then yeah for a long time it was just like a side business until I eventually decided to to make it my profession and scale it up professionally mm -hmm. and I think it's safe to say like that you made a very bold move because first you were working in IT and I mean at the moment IT is something like very huge and then you went to marketing what made you like completely how can I say like switch to yeah to um, so I think there's more than one reasons number one is it's my huge passion and even back then when I worked in IT the highlight of the day was always going to the gym. Mm -hmm. I would wait until four o'clock because then I could clock out and go to the gym. This was my highlight. And um, I probably shouldn't say that, but even back then, during my IT days, I would work on my website. I would work on, on uh, building my programs and whatnot. Um, it's just like a huge uh, passion of mine. Obviously, uh, money is in IT. And if I would go just after the money, I would stay in IT and I would make very, very good money, I would say. Um, but it wouldn't fulfill me. You remember, I just like hated, maybe not hated, but I wasn't fulfilled. Mm -hmm. I wasn't changing lives as I can do now. And then obviously when we moved to Brazil, there was also the thought of, okay, what if the company I work for which is in Switzerland, doesn't require me anymore. What if they replace me with someone else mm -hmm. in Switzerland? Um, 
this was just like going on in my mind. Obviously, it, it turned out completely different. I was the one who quit and said, no, I, I don't want to do this anymore. Um, but yeah, it's just so much more fulfilling. Um, following my passion, I can do what I always wanted to do. Um, it turned out very well also financially and what I keep saying myself and what I know inside is like it, it it's working as long as I'm very passionate about it and as long as I really live it because gym performance the online coaching business is not just a business I everything I do I would say from early in the morning until the evening until mm -hmm. go to bed is somehow connected to gym performance yes. right whether it's creating content or coaching people or um like just learning new things it's so much more and i know as long as i have this passion and as long as i keep putting in the work and my clients get results then mm -hmm. it's going well at the moment i'm not trying to get better the moment i lose this passion then it will probably all collapse mm -hmm. but um yeah, I'm, I'm very grateful to, to have this opportunity or to, to make a, a living of what I actually love. And, and yeah, it works out financially. And again, the fulfillment I get, um, I would say I even get more excited when I get a, a testimonial from a client and someone who's very grateful and mm -hmm. tells me how I changed uh, their lives. This is so much more uh, value to me than, than maybe a new client who pays me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very fulfilling, very fulfilling job. Yeah. And what are your plans for the future of gym performance? That's a good question. Um, so when we would go on this journey here, digital nomads uh, lifestyle, I told myself I don't necessarily want to grow gym performance any further. Instead, I also want to like, you know, enjoy time with you and Lara, just with, with my uh, family. And I would be happy to just maintain the, the level where I'm at. Now, this lasted a few weeks, maybe a month or two, and that's okay, I, I need to improve it. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so right now, the, the plans are, so to integrate you, to uh, do more uh, recipe videos, because this is something my clients oftentimes ask for and i think that this will like uh yeah give a lot of value to them um and then i mean you're doing the nasm the, the personal trainer certification so hopefully i can can integrate you there too to, to help me creating programs uh maybe even coaching females because right now i'm more dominant with uh males mm -hmm. with fathers and entrepreneurs maybe one day we can do something like for uh moms um, I have a few moms, but I, I um, would say fathers and entrepreneurs can identify themselves better with me. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, same problem, same situation and whatnot. Um, and then I think Catalyst, my new brand, will, will take a lot of time this year. So, yeah, it's going to be a challenge. It's going to be a challenge. Um, luckily, have a good team that assists me and I can uh, outsource a lot of things but still like um, it's going to be very tricky to to build a new brand whilst keeping or pushing team performance but mm -hmm. that's what I'm going to do okay so do you have any tips to someone who wants to start an online business yeah I would definitely hire a coach 100% because I, I did again Gym performance exists still since 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and for a long time, I just would try it myself. Some things worked, some things didn't. Wasn't very professional. I did it in the evenings. There was a side hustle, obviously. Mm -hmm. And then it was just until I uh, hired coaches when I saw the scale. And I didn't only hire one, but it was two, three, Four business coaches in the meantime, and uh, they were they are very expensive. They're very expensive, but yeah, worth any every single dollar, I would say. And I mean, I believe strongly in coaching. Otherwise, I wouldn't be a coach myself. Yeah. And how could I 
try to figure out the way myself if I tell my clients as well, man, you are better off with a coach mm -hmm. because my, it's, it's not so much different, right? You have like building an online fitness business or um, being someone who wants to get in shape. You can try to find your, your way mm -hmm. and, and try different things, see what's working, see what's not working, um, spend hours and hours on, on researching things. Or you can hire someone who teaches an uh, uh, established way mm -hmm. and a solution that is proven to work. Now, with which option you get quicker to, to the goal, it's no clear, brainer. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what were your biggest challenges while mm. like building your business? Thousands. There's thousands of challenges. Um, uh, biggest, I don't know, like, I think as an entrepreneur, you have like so many challenges and um, I don't even know where to start. I think it's just like part of the game. There is setbacks, there is uh, times where it doesn't seem to work what you're doing. Um, the journey of an entrepreneur is like frustration and then happiness and then you're, you're sad and then you're feeling top of the world. And uh, sometimes you, you um, feel this obviously when I'm like mm -hmm. very moody uh, and then all of a sudden I'm, I'm very happy and but it's just like the journey I think um, uh, there's there's like a, a ton of, of setbacks um, but uh, right now right now it's, it's probably um, one that is related to catalyst the new supplement line for entrepreneurs because like the supplement so I, I ordered some samples and it got seized by the customs so the thai fda or whatever they they took it out and said no you cannot have it for whatever reason you don't have documents and yeah this is a bit of a setback because i'm having a timeline and now obviously i need to reorder or reformulate and yeah i don't know exactly how i'm going to do it but um i will find a way because like again struggles and setbacks are mm -hmm. just part of, of the of game course. Yeah. Okay, and how do you make sure to balance gym, business, and family? Um, I think sometimes I do it well, sometimes not so much. People always believe that I have perfect balance, but sometimes I don't. As I said earlier, like I'm probably more of a workaholic than I should be. And I also found out that I really cannot enjoy a day off when I didn't work hard for it. When we go a weekend away, Mm -hmm. Two days is fine for me and then the third day I feel the need to do something again. I, I want to be productive. Um, I'm, I'm having usually a hard time to just take a break for a just long time relax, to relax. Yeah. Uh, again, like one day is great, two days is okay, and then three days. The same with the gym. Like if I cannot work out for even two days, I'm, I'm getting crazy. Mm -hmm. just want to be doing things, want to be active, want to be productive, get shit done really. Um, where I'm going with this? What was the question? Oh, how to balance. Um, sure. <laughs> um, so what I do is every Sunday I write down the goals of the week and then I structure it. I write it down and I have a structure where it's like okay, business and then fitness and then family. And for each of those categories, I set specific goals. And for family, it's then, okay, I want to see uh, the sunset with my family. I want to go to a restaurant. Um, I want to spend one hour with Lara, um, blah, blah, blah fitness i want to go to the gym five times a week i want to do one cardio session uh, business i want to do exceptional sets and then i just have it constantly in front of me whenever i work it's the next to me and then this way it's actually super easy because like every every day i look at it and see what things need to get done so mm -hmm. instead of having this huge goal that i want to achieve a year from now or whatnot, I'm just like splitting it up in, in daily actions and this way I make sure that yeah, each of those categories get enough time because like I know if I go to bed in the evening and I haven't done the things, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm usually not very happy um, and so I'm just trying to get everything done and by writing it out and, and having it in front of me and having those different categories, I make sure that it's not only here that the business side of things that gets done or just the fitness side of things but really everything and i think i mean we are creatures of habits mm -hmm. so so um 
I think when you want to have this balance, um, you just need to make it a routine every single day to, to like participate in, in these different activities. You cannot be balanced and, and, and then work 14 hours a day and then, you know, neglect your things. So yeah, this really helps me. This uh, this list I have, I would do this on a on a whiteboard back in Switzerland. Right now we don't have a, a whiteboard; it was too heavy to bring it with me. So I have just like a notepad. Really, I write it down every Sunday. I have it in front of me all the time. Um, I look at it every now and then to to uh, just make sure that I'm on track or what I'm missing. And sometimes I see something. Oh, I wanted to record. Uh, a podcast or oh um, I wanted to go to a restaurant with my family uh, what about tonight right mm -hmm. um, yeah but I don't think I figured it all out um, it's I think always a challenge especially because of my nature of pushing things of, of being again a little bit of a workaholic you would say in my opinion there's no one who is fully balanced or maybe I can rephrase it and say what is the balance then because if someone is very successful he probably worked very very hard mm -hmm. on this specific thing on his business or whatever he's uh, successful for um, and there's barely or at least I don't know anyone who can say okay I built this great business and I became financially independent and whatnot and um, at the same time, I spend six hours a day with my family. It's very, very rare. Mm -hmm. There is probably some outliers, but usually if you want to achieve great things, you need to put in the work exactly if, for someone who wants to compete in a bodybuilding show or whatnot. They need to do a cardio, I don't know, every single day, go to the gym for hours, do their posing, do their um, meal prep. It requires a lot of work. They cannot eat out probably, they cannot um, have family dinners and whatnot and is this balanced then? No, but it's required to to be on the top of this world mm -hmm. um, so is there balance? It depends on what balance is for you I would say. Mm -hmm. Okay and since we are talking about family this is actually my last question uh, what was your biggest biggest lesson after becoming a father? <clears throat> Um, biggest lesson. I learned that I'm not just a machine who can work, go to the gym, sleep, repeat, but I learned emotions to be to be emotional, really. Like I think I never before before I was a father, I never cried when I would watch a movie and I would cry when I would watch like like when I need to rephrase when once I got a father I cried even when listening to a podcast someone um, on the podcast was explaining or, or talking me through uh, his journey of becoming a father and he was in the hospital and what happened and I had tears I was walking and I had tears because I, I could resonate so well and I would have like this movie in front of me all again when I became father super super uh emotional um when watching a movie like this is the first time i cried um and just like all this up and downs but in a very very good way in a, in a very positive way before i was more like a machine i didn't show a lot of emotions i would just do my things and uh yeah very stable but once I become a father, it's like this up and down all the time. You get so frustrated. It's a bit like the, the journey of an entrepreneur where you're like frustrated and then happy. And then, I mean, with, with Lara, with our daughter, I have the best moments with her. And sometimes she annoys me so much. That I'm, man, um, it's so complicated, so difficult with her. Um, but yeah, it's, it's very... She taught me a lot about myself also about patience uh, she told me patience be patient obviously um, many things and um, 
yeah, it's a very joyful journey. Oh, although, okay. <laughs> although, although, I mean, yeah, for those who haven't seen it yet, um, also watch her podcast. <laughs> what motherhood did to her <laughs> so it's not all, all only all positive and, and yeah happiness there's also a lot of struggle there's like the sleepless nights in the beginning um this is something yeah in mm-hmm. the beginning like how powerful sleep is something i had to learn through fatherhood because when you only have like three or four hours or wake up all the time you cannot just perform and I remember sleeping in, falling asleep at work at one point in the co-working space because I was so freaking tired. Um, what, what was it for you? It's interesting about it. It was very hard, yeah. But, but what was the, the, the lesson learned? Lesson. Yeah. Um, to prioritize mental health. Oh, yeah, I just want to say that. Over anything. Yeah. I think when you become a parent you think oh i need to learn this i need to learn that and because i was a mom at such a young age i thought oh my god i I need to you know read all those books i need to see all of like this documentaries podcasts and all of that so i thought i had so much to learn right and i forgot to prioritize my mental health and in the end that's where i struggled i would say in general just like to remember that you are your number one priority yeah that it's not your child it's mm-hmm. although it's a super high priority and mm-hmm. very important to you that you still need to make sure that you find yourself and that you cannot give up give up your life yeah. for because if you're not child. in a good mental place or if you're not well you're not going to be able to you know be yeah. a good parent that's so. what i always say like um when i'm not find myself how can i be a good coach how can i be a good partner how can i be a good father it, mm-hmm. i cannot and this is why I mean, sometimes people see this selfish or maybe even for a long time for you, this was a bit weird. Like when, whenever we would travel and the first thing I would do, I would go to the gym <laughs> instead of, I don't know, checking out or, or making groceries or whatnot. Um, or when I remember when you visited Switzerland, we were not, we were having a long term relationship. You yeah. would visit me in Switzerland and you were pissed because i would go to the gym and <laughs> you tell me you were really pissed and then man what is he like, doing but man i traveled from australia to switzerland <laughs> and you're going to the gym <laughs> yeah but i, I just know uh, i get very moody and I, i'm just like again in control i'm i'm a better person when i look after myself first so everything else yeah. is just like second place yeah no I, I, I had to learn that the hard way but yep. <laughs> i finally learned to yeah. <laughs> yeah is there something else you want to add oh uh, no 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 yeah just like um let me know whether you found this useful in any way i don't know whether it was interesting or not again it's the first video in this format we're doing um these questions were now all from gabriella if you have questions that you want me to answer, then you can leave them mm-hmm. in the comments or send me send me them on Instagram or as I mean email or whatever. Yeah. I'm always uh, happy to, to answer questions. Maybe I'm going to do that again. We'll see. Depends on how your reaction will be. But yeah, we made it. This is my first Q and A. Um, really, thanks for taking your time and for uh, coming up with the questions. <laughs> And to you guys, thanks for tuning in and uh, see you in the next one. Cheers.